hits and crits. What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of On Target uh, with Larks and Iceman. Uh, the beginner series continues, right? Great to have you too. Um, we will now start with game modes. Now after that we, we did the list building, we did uh, deployment, terrain, and we also did this d terrain deep dive, how you, how you, how you wanted it. Um, now we will focus game mode. So we will um, f focus this in this beginner series because it's an, uh, like a major influence and factor on how this game plays out. And uh, especially when, when players start out with the game, this can be a little bit overwhelming. Like the rules, like five objectives, three objectives. Does co solos count with wounds? Does it not? Do you pick up the token, etc., etc. So we will give you uh, a guidance on this one um, because it's uh, very, very important to master the game. Uh, also, it's um, but even even though it can be overwhelming, it's uh, it's a really fun and interesting part of learning the game and getting better uh, in this game. So, um, yeah, so that's what we want to do. So we will focus on game modes that are most played in the competitive environment, actually, so or in, in tournament play. So um, and all in, in this whole guide on the game modes will be um, uh, we'll start with a with a short summary with a with an um, intro on this game mode, then the general approach, how veterans like those two um, like, like take on this game mode and what's their general approach to it. And then there will be a quick demonstration using uh, the simulator to make it as visible and appealing as possible for you out there. And um, yeah, that's how we will start out. Daniel, any, anything to add? Um, Let's start right in, I guess. Let's start right in. All right. So, um, and for today, we will start with uh, two five objective game modes, um, which, is, which are uh, Hone and Ready and Game of Thrones. Yeah, great. So here so, we are. Perfect. Game of Thrones, probably the yeah, all-time classic um, of all game modes. Um, and my job is to give you a quick summary of the game game mode. That's uh, how we start off every introduction um, of the of the different game modes that we present to you. So Game of Thrones is a five objective game mode, first and foremost. And it is um, most notably signified by having objective cards. So and these objective cards, they have effects and their effects can be very beneficial. Most notably, you know, like the plus one card uh, draw in hand size and uh, healing, for example. We will discuss them later in detail um, so that you have a general idea which cards are more impactful than others and how to rank and rate them and so on and so on. Other than that, there are no special constraints, right? It's plain and simple. You have five objective game, uh, five objectives, you have objective cards and nothing else, basically. Uh, the one thing to note, though, is that um, it's always the question, how do you contest objectives in game mode or contest your opponent and contest objectives from your opponent? So, and um, there are differences. We will cover them uh, down the route. For now, it's important to just know that Game of Thrones, there are, it is so that solos counts um, as having ranks as uh, much as, uh, yeah, so, so that they have as much ranks as they have wounds left. Basically, so a giant with four wounds counts as four ranks and will always contest an infantry unit um, if it is in contact with. So that's something to to take and yeah to, to keep in mind. Which is a big thing, actually, right? I, I so so many be be beginners get confused by the different game modes and d does my solo count as having wounds? Does it not? Right? That's a really big thing. Is there a general rule we can put out that that is uh, like like less? overwhelming or easier to remember. Is there anything, uh, um, uh, Martin? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> basically, if you need to um, be fully over the objective mode, mm -hmm. then um, solo units, yeah, fully cover mm -hmm. solo units counts uh, as having as many ranks as, as many wounds. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> in um, Dance with Dragons or uh, Feast for Crows, then it's uh, solo units count as one rank. Mm -hmm. 
All right. So where you pick up the token. Yes. That's the, that's the general rule. So, yeah. Uh, fully cover and pick up is the general pick up and move. separator. Yeah. yeah, pick up and move. Uh, the, yeah. the, the general separator between it does the solo count for uh, with wounds or not. All right. Cool. Yeah, so my part is to give you the general approach to this game mode. And as Daniel always said, it's a very vanilla game mode, but uh, you have to consider some things. And here in this game mode, the money is um, based on the objective cards. And we have a little tier list for you, for your beginners, so that you can rank the objectives and look, is the side worth taking or... Um, should I take the other side? And we start with tier A. And in tier A, we have two objective cards. That's the hand size and the heal card. Those are the two strongest in our opinion. Then we have tier B. Tier B is a shift card and all the tokens from long range. And our last tier, uh, those are all keywords on attacks, like precision, height attack value, sundering, and so on and so on. And when you play this game mode and you um, and everything is said and done, you have to look um, at the table and see, hmm, which side do I want to take? And in this game mode, it's, it could be more important when I can choose a very, very strong side. Um, I choose the side over going first. As we said in our last videos, going first is a little bit more cleaner and easier to get the pressure. But here, going first uh, could be wrong if my opponent gets a very, very strong side. And we have just two uh, small hints again um, list, so for list picking. Um, five combat units or eight activation is better in this game mode because you need two game modes on the left, uh, two, two combat units, one on the left, one on the right, mm -hmm. and then you need two to three to fight for the middle. And if you only have four uh, combat units, two are already um, on the left and on the right, and you only have two units to fight for the middle. And if your opponent has got three to fight in the middle, it's better for him. That's our general approach for mm. you beginners here. Understood. Um... But still, like what, like Daniel, what what would be the the setup you see on on your or the other side where you where you really drop the 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 um, decision to become first player? What makes you drop that? Um, yeah, in general, one could say like you definitely want to see one A tier on your side and probably not on the other side, right? Yes. Like so that you really get an advantage <laughs> of it, and then it's a little bit dependent uh, on the army and the matchup and so on. Sure. Um, but in general, I would say if you want to make a difference between heal and um, cards and hand size, cards and hand size is even more impactful because because it's always on, even if you don't score from the objective. Yeah. And so you will always profit from it, whereas the healing card might not be that beneficial at all but it can be obviously very good and very strong in certain situations. So if I see cards and hand size, I'm always really tempted yeah. to do this. And that's all, like in general, it's good to remember that you see the objective cards and that they are like put on the table um, after terrain, but before you choose sides, right? Um, it's something that people tend to yeah forget Confused. or overlook. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that would be my answer. Cool. Yeah, I've seen that happening actually, and it's always it's still even though it it for, for, at least for me it, it it made always clear sense that you put out the objectives on game modes before you ch are choosing sides because it's like a tactical it's a tactical element of the game right because if you wouldn't then there would be no sense in like right um, uh, yeah so so yeah totally feel you so also general rule if there are objective cards you put it down and then you choose yeah. your side or then you decide you, who, be, who 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 may choose side yeah right. and if you see like one a tier card and and a b tier or another a tier then it's like a really good sign to think about it and um once again you can then um or you 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 have to adapt just a little bit right yeah. if you are not first player 
in first round, that's not the end of the world. You just have to adapt and remember that you know your opponent will have the initiative basically or the tempo going into round three and so on and so on. And mm -hmm. if you adapt, you can really profit from the benefits uh, of your objectives or missions mm -hmm. and um, yeah, not have all the, the, the negative effects that you might think about if you uh, see that you are not first player. Yeah. All right. So that's um, that's it for the general approach, and I think it's a good thing now to get um, visual. Um, yeah. Let's go to the sim. All right, there we are. So I think, Martin, it's up to you to yeah. some demonstration. Yeah, no, we have a table set and done for you, and here we have uh, a melee objective in the middle. So TSC. Here we have another melee thing, another TSC. Here it's the shift. The shift could be B, could be C. It depends on the game situation. But on three we have hand size, and five it's the heal card. And in this case, it's obviously pretty clear. We said that I have won the role. Who goes first? Who can choose sides? And even if this is a worse aside terrain wise i would take this aside because here is wound it could be good um it depends if the action is here if the action here it's very very great but i have the hand size thing and one thing to remember here you only need to control it so my wolf can run here in round one and when i draw cards for round two i can draw one more and if you have some scenarios like this just go for the better side. And one thing, if I control this thing here, it's hard for Daniel to fight here because my unit will heal. I can put them here, maybe like this, like this, and the wolf can heal these guys already. And it's hard for Daniel to fight here because he has to fight into this objective. So maybe he needs to consider, okay, I'm not fighting here, I'll just stay um, uh, on objective number four and basically do nothing. That's also a great benefit from this healing thing, that I can choose where to fight or not where to fight. Yeah, and, and I mean, uh, what is also important to, 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 um, yeah, to note here is that both sides picked eight activation lists or five combat unit lists. This is intentional, right? So because this game mode, um, you have a lot of opportunities to score from objectives, right? We will cover other game modes where you don't have these opportunities. And our general advice is to use them, use them, right? And get yourself into a position where you can use them. So don't bring your like four Death Star units that really want to go and, and fight your enemy, but instead bring a more balanced list maybe where you have a five point unit that is totally okay sitting on the objective and just scoring points right so mm -hmm. this is something to to take into account and if you want to do this then you probably i mean they may they may be defensive units like wardens or guards or whatever but you they are typically uh, weaker units and if this is the case you want to protect them and then we can now we can relate to our um, last video with some kind of form of defensive terrain, right? Yeah. So think about putting palisades, low wall, walls um, uh, at the side objectives, right? Um, to just yeah, give them give them uh, a, a little little bonus in, in their defensive department, right? But no hedges. No, no, <laughs> no hedges. hedges. No hedges, no hedges. No hedges. No. Yeah, yeah, Daniel made a good point. Game of Thrones is a quick scenario because of the five objective modes. And let's say um, in round two, I had it from time to time. I controlled four objective, and then it's four points. And then the game is basically one points is a lot. Uh, in round three, I could leave one or two behind, and I still would score two, and then I'm at six. So I only need to score a little bit more and kill a unit here and there. And it's it's a fast modus and, and a fun mode, but we will cover modes like Winds of Winter. Winds of Winter is a very slow, uh, game mode here cool so on on game of thrones um martin is is like like when you have to put it in like mo most favorite game mode 
number one yeah. to least favorite game mode, where is Game of Thrones? In one, two, how many do we have? Ten? Is it ten? Is it ten uh, now with less than ten. Butchery? It's less than it's nine? Whatever. Let's we'll yeah. give you the answer like later. All right. Watch all so of it. Right, right here. Not, it's, it's nine or ten, but let's just yeah. say ten, right? Where where yeah. is it? Where is it? Uh from from um yeah. Your point of view. For me personally, I like Game of Thrones. It's not my favorite mode, but it's a good mode. It's a good mode to start a tournament for tournament organizers. Um, and it's a very easy mode there. No big questions, no special rules. I think it's a good mode. And because of the TV series, it's uh, basically maybe the most known game mode. So, so I like it. I would give it a, a solid... A solid two plus here. A solid two plus. So, a solid two plus. In Germany, two plus is close to the best uh, grade that's, you can reach at score. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Daniel, would you say that Game of Thrones is also the perfect intro match game mode, or would you say be, be, because I actually with with beginners, I I tend to play Clash of Kings. Yeah, um, that's what I wanted to say. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool, cool. So, so, so yeah. you would say that too? Okay. I, I would agree because, like, there you only have objectives that give points. Exactly. No special rules from yeah. um, from the mission cards, and the focus is on your very cool commander unit, right? So yeah. that's that's Absolutely. great. Um, but Game of Thrones is fine, and from a Free Frog perspective, right? Um, Free Frog is very, very oppressive in in Game of Thrones. Because yeah, they can simply sit on the objectives and do their fighting, fighting withdrawal style of gameplay, and it's really, really hard to play against it. Yeah. So, yeah, I would add something here. Game of Thrones maybe is not the best intro mode because uh, you only fight for the middle, and whoever will win the middle will score three, and the other guy will score two. And for beginners, it's like, ah, huh, I need to stay here, but I also need to fight them. And if you play this. Often with beginners, it's oh, it's very very boring because you only fight for one objective, and if this objective is decided, then the game is decided, and that's not the case. That might be your impression from one or two games, but it is the other way around. So I would go with Daniel. I would go with mm -hmm. Clash of Kings, or maybe I know it's not the uh, best or everybody's favorite game mode, but Fire and Blood is a very very easy game mode. To just to get to know and to get to used to the rules because it's yeah. just fighting each other. Yeah. And, and I would say for, for beginner, um, Fire and Blood is a good game mode. Mm -hmm. All right. So that one particular game mode that we want to cover today was not mentioned. So now we will get get back to uh, the um, yeah, let's say the summary, the intro for Honed and Ready. Right, so Honed and Ready, I think, uh, Martin, can you guide us through uh, Honed and Ready, please? Yes. So, Honed and Ready is another five objective game mode. Very easy, no cards. And no palisades are allowed because you have these castle walls and you're not allowed to place um, palisades as terrain. But now the interesting part uh, is coming and every time you score from the side objectives that's for side objectives your unit will get hits just hits it's not an attack no harm no shield wall just a normal attack but it's d3 plus two so on average four hits and you need to calculate a little bit here how long can my unit stay on this objective and every ncu has a replacement effect Let's say I go to the to the horses, and I, but I can't use it. Then I can shoot on one enemy unit that is on the side objective, and this unit will get another D3 plus two hits, and I can do it again and again and again if the unit is dead or has to leave the objective. So uh, at first, it's a very easy game mode to learn. But it's a very hard game mode to master. I would say it's a typical chess answer here, but uh, it's a it's mm -hmm. a complicated and and a deeper game mode. And it's not that easy, and I see a lot of people playing it wrong, and lose uh, this game mode. But they don't have the idea why they have lost the game. They say, "Oh, that was best I." No, you didn't play it correctly. That is why you lost this game mode. 
but then you will give you more hints here in his general approach. Yeah, the general approach to the mode um, goes from the simple fact that the side objectives are like dangerous zones to be, right? Um, you really have to think about um, or be careful um, and very thoughtful whether you want to go there or not. And if you want to go there, you have to be pretty sure that you can stay there and get value out of it. Um, and this means that securing the middle, that's the only objective where you can score without taking hits, is a priority, like big priority. Um, so only move on the sc or score from the side objective if zones are blocked and you can really tank or heal the incoming damage, right? Don't move there if like the tactics board is completely open. Really open. You yeah. will get shot to pieces, <laughs> like, definitely, if your opponent is aware um, of, the, of the opportunity. We like sample units um, that are good for this purpose to score, for example, would be like your typical wardens three plus infantry unit, definitely. Um, but also stone crows come into mind. They are like, I think you covered it in, in your video on the unit, right, Chris? Um, they are like yeah. the perfect fit for this specific purpose to just stay there, take the hits with their four plus armor from, from, yeah. from wherever this comes from. Like if you mm -hmm. look at the, the minis, right? Why do they have four plus armor? Um, <laughs> and if you activate, you heal. So they are perfect for this. Um, so try to avoid the extra damage from NCU arrows, right? And um, if you moved onto it while all zones are blocked, like in the next round, the zones will be open. And you have to come up with a solution um, how you want to deal with it, because otherwise you will get a ton of hits. And this will even wear down heavy armored units uh, in the process. So for example, what you can do is if you have tech repo on a unit, you can shift um, off the objective and later on at the end of the round, move on to it again. Or you have ranged units, for example, are perfect for this. Like do an, do an attack, shift off from swords or whatever, and then later on, go back onto the objective. And what uh, is an av advice for you to avoid the extra damage? Um, if you have like the, the opposite side, use the extra damage from your NCU arrows as much as possible if your opponent slats you, right? So um, yeah, and if you really want to lock down a unit, if, if there is a unit on, on an objective, side objective, and you have an open board, like, Get your NCU, put it on horses so that the the unit is locked there and replace, just replace and do the hits, do the hits and it will work wonders, like really. Um, doing four hits in general, like on average with your D3 plus two is exactly what free fog traps or just hidden traps does. And I can tell you from experience, hidden traps win <laughs> games. There so, is. yeah. <laughs> yeah, cool. So like, like th thanks for the general approach that makes me think or that makes that makes it pretty clear that especially in this game mode i mean uh martin said it also on game of thrones but especially in this game mode you have to fight the the or you have to win the fight for the middle right yeah. the middle is the key centerpiece in this game mode what you need to con at least contest or win the battle right in order to win this game mode correct yeah it's it's very important to win this as a middle here yeah. because uh, I talked about it earlier. Game of Thrones is a very quick game mode because of the arrow thing. Um, this game mode is a very slow game mode because often I'm thinking of do I put my my Stark Sword Swords on this on this point? Oh, but next round they are not safe. Daniel is going first next round. He's a good player. He will block the horses, and then I need to bring them back with the activation. And yeah, that's not that good. So mm -hmm. um, here the middle is very, very important, even more important than in the other game mode. Yeah, totally. So, sorry, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, w one could say like for, for unexperienced players, it's even it's even a quicker game mode than Game of Thrones, right? <laughs> because cool. everything will, yeah. will die and score and, in the process. Like, but um, if you see how it is played on, on yeah, a more sophisticated level, so to speak, like it tends to be very yeah, careful and, and um, thoughtful whether you want to go on the points or not. And then it, it might 
um, go to to round five or six. Yeah. 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 So I would add, it's a very slow game mode if you play it correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. True. Um, so Daniel, we talked about terrain placement through Game of Thrones. So using defensive um, um, uh, terrain pieces. So obviously in this one, Palisades does not play a role because it's not allowed. But um, it, what about terrain specifically for this game mode? So you're there, you can pick, yep. you can pick your first terrain piece. What do you do? I know this is dependent on, you know, on, on your list and like, and, uh, but, but I would go for something in the middle and it might be a big one. Right. But what else can you tell us about terrain for, for honed and ready? Yeah. What, what comes into mind is, um, that if you, if you are, um, optimistic that you can win the fight for the middle, you want to yeah, keep the middle free from disturbing terrain, right? That's point one. If you are not optimistic that you can win the middle and you know, you have like two units of Rose Knights in the middle and uh, where you know that they will come up or whatever, and you don't want this fight, simply block it with, a, uh, with, with stakes, right? That's something you can do here. Stakes in the middle is totally fine. So at least, you know, um, your opponent has to spend resources and might just not score in, in, in round mm -hmm. two or whatever. Uh, and you have to, you have time to find another way to win the game during, mm -hmm. during this period. So I, I like to either block off the middle or keep it free if I really want to go there. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's one thing. And other than that, um, yeah, you can, you can imagine that if you have a range unit on one side, um, this might be strong. Even if you don't score, you can really say this objective is a no-go area for you, my friend, because yeah, there will come arrows from, from up and above and from like my side of the table. Mm. And um, if you do this, you typically want some terrain that interacts positively with your range unit, whether it might be stakes, whether it might be a low wall um, or even, even a wood. Mm. To protect them, you mean? Yeah, to protect them and that yeah. you can work with yeah, it. Yeah, got it. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, that not your yeah, opponent cannot simply come after it so easy. All right. So let's now go to the uh, go to the demonstration part. All right. So here we are um, in the simulator, and um, yeah, Daniel, you you're up to uh, guide us through it. Yeah, we have now um, after we had a, like a positive example with a uh, Game of Thrones. Now we have learning from a negative example I like uh, in, Hone, in Hone and Ready. And um, I'm the Baratheon player in this situation. And we have like the armies we, we know from the demonstration before. And let's say we are end of round one, basically. I have two activations left. Um, Martin uh, began and, you know, I'm a newer player. I'm not familiar with the game mode. Let's say I have my unit here. Um, of high garden pikemen, four plus armor. What could what could what could go wrong? I really want to cover uh, the objective as uh, fast as possible, and I move on to the objective. Okay, that was not a clean move, but whatever. Let's say I can reach it like this. Fine, it's uh, less than ten inches. Here we are. That's my move. Yeah, perfect. Then because I'm a mean guy and I have Aya left. <laughs> you are. I move her. <laughs> I am. I move Wasn't her. Funny. So <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> okay, I move Arya to the swords, and we are not rolling dice here. Let's say on average, I will deal two hits for Daniel. He uh, four hits for Daniel. He has got an armor of four up, so it's two more wounds for his pure pike man. So, and then you know we we okay. That was an oversight, but not the end of the world, right? So, okay, let's go. I move my. Um, my unit up here and um, that's basically round one yeah and we go into round two yeah round two Daniel is going first here I'm first player the world is open um, and obviously what you do if you're first player letters you claim the best zone letters. on the tactics board letters obviously right? so let's let's take uh, whatever various claim letters, draw cards, get a maybe a vulnerable token on a unit because I know there will be arrows and vulnerable tokens are very valuable for this, etc. etc. I'm happy after my opening. Okay. So me being more mean, I'm taking Aya, put her on the horses to lock this unit here 
this poor pikeman so if they want to run away they need to activate so no free maneuver to Dan for daniel here and little aya deals two more damage to those guys here okay no 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 things might uh, worry me a little bit i realized that i yeah I, I am in the danger zone i lost a complete rank now what is my natural response okay no problem backs open right so I uh, activate another NCU, claim the bags, and um, heal three up. Um, how do I do it? <laughs> Help me, I'm not very familiar with this sim, maybe. Yeah, thank you. So here we are, right? Problem solved. Yeah, maybe. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to pass with Sansa because I don't want to burn an activation. And uh, back to Daniel. Yeah, and, and, and now we have the pickle that I, I find myself in because um, either I stay here and score, cool, but then I will definitely get uh, one more arrow, one uh, more arrow volley from um, the scoring itself, but also from one zone because I have only one NCU left and there will be an open zone. So this would be four more wounds. So I'm then at seven wounds and there are enemy units yeah, um, opposing on the opposing side. So this could be very dangerous because he is opening round three, right? So I have a pop. If I move from the objective, move off the objective, right? Then I don't score at all. And my whole maneuver was of no sense anyway, right? So this is a real bad situation for me right now that, that we have, uh, even though it might not have felt that it is. For the beginning because yeah, it basically says i cannot score yeah in the first yeah, place i looked, cannot it, score it well. it, yeah. and if i do i take a big risk because there are stocks on the oppo uh, opposing side and they have i don't know scary cards or maybe the landscape could come over here whatever um but i don't want to have a unit with like seven wounds um just standing there basically and this is assuming average right i could also get very unlucky and um yeah could be dealt even more wounds Yeah, cool. So to 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 round up the demonstration, um, Martin, um, like, or my, my, my final, my, my, or my, my, my biggest question in this is, um, so let's just assume you are quite well set up in the middle. Is there a time um, throughout the game mode or a certain round where you say now it could be safe to cover side objectives, even though it's open? Or is that what we just showed? Is that a general thing throughout six rounds? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, the only round I would say it's safe to get onto the side objective is round six. Mm -hmm. and because then there is only one more round, uh, no more round to go, and I can block the tactic walls. But mm -hmm. if you do it like like here, like Daniel uh, showed us, um, there is no safe place for even the smaller units on this objective, on the side objective. So then that makes this uh, game mode very tough, and also for beginners. Um, if Daniel is not moving his pikemen away, they're going to be shot to death here and yeah this makes this uh game out a little bit more feeling feeling fishy for new beginners because they say oh i need to play this game out i need to go on to, to this objective but i get shot um and it's it's difficult you need to learn to play this game out and to know one when the right time is um but in general i would say yeah round six could be a uh, opportunity to go there. I mean, you can go earlier onto the objectives for sure. You just have to have the right conditions, right? Have to be the right units. There maybe is no enemy unit in sight that, so that you can really calculate what is coming. Um, th these, this might be, these might be factors. And one thing worth noting is if you die on the objective end of round, when you score, you still score, yeah. right? You still yeah. score and then you die. 
So that might be the edge, right? That might be the yeah. edge of winning a game. You say, okay, mm -hmm. I will, you know, throw away that unit by, uh, but I will be at ten points, for example. For example, and yeah. my opponent has like four points, and he will get get one point from yeah. the different unit, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So this is something to to um, remember. And yeah, so you you should really try out which units um, are good on like in this game mode or on the side objectives, for example, you could try free folk giants, basically um, have them score uh, very safe because you, um, so, so you have uh, the incoming hits, right? Only two hits result for one wound for a giant. And if you get wounds in the process, that's a good thing because let's say you score like two or three rounds, get three wounds in the process and suddenly you have a very very um, deadly savage giant which mm -hmm. is not something you could say very often of a savage giant because it is in a normal way a pretty a pretty sad figure in a normal game that can be ignored so easily but not in this game mode that's a situation where this lovely model can shine a lovely unit got it martin uh i take it back you're not a mean guy but daniel is. <laughs> that's very um, lovely yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, All but right. one one more thing here. I think this game mode is the game mode in the game where you can practice the best and get a learning curve. When I go there, where should I go? Um, when should I use the zone to shoot? And when should I use the zone to heal or to move away? Um, and mm. if you practice a lot, you will get good in this game mode. And one more thing, we didn't talk about water gardens or health of the undying. This, those two bonus zones make this game mode even worse for units on the side objective, because then basically everybody could shoot three times and in the scoring phase, so four times if he likes. And that makes this game mode even harder. Yeah, definitely. All right, anything to add to this um, demonstration? No, we're good. No, okay. So um, I think that rounds it up um, for this first game mode beginner's guide. Um, yeah, so as always, guys, if you like the series, if you like to uh, see more, just drop your comments down below and ask us for, you know, specific game modes or, you know, any contribution, any feedback as you as you've seen with the terrain piece, we are uh, really eager to, 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 to put out the best content for you guys. So you have the, you, you, you have everything to play this game uh, better and more serious or, you know, <laughs> um, yeah, to just become a better player. Um, so we're always open to, to hear feedback. Yeah, so if you want to hit us up, um, if you want to play a game with us, maybe a game against Free Folk and Game of Thrones, no. <laughs> um, uh, I'm under, under whatever condition, you know, yeah. Yeah, whatever yeah. you want to, you like. Um, <laughs> if you want to practice uh, how to to get the order right here in in Hound and Ready, we are really open for this. It's a very welcoming and um, open community. So yeah, just join the Discord, and there are plenty of games played, and you can you can maybe only just stay there and watch, see us playing or others playing. And um, yeah, just uh, come and have a good time with us. Yeah, and if you like what we are doing, those videos take a lot of time to um, produce and there are some hidden traps for us. We are a little bit new to this. If you like what we're doing, maybe you're considering to uh, hit us up on Patreon so that we can do a lot of more of these beautiful videos for you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you both. Uh, I'm really excited to see the, 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 the other game modes we're planning, uh, but I'm all, also excited to see what the community says. So uh, I think there's nothing more to say than until we meet again, roll those crits. Come for the hits and stay for the crits.